I hate to say I told you so, but if Mark Gurman is to be believed, Apple is set to have the M4 chip out before the end of the year, just 12 months after the M3 came out in October of 2023, and the rollout looks to be similar, but more extensive. Maybe, just maybe, as I said in 2020, before we'd had our first Apple Silicon ship, Apple is building out a stable annual release schedule for the future. Want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell. Now before I come to the roadmap itself, why did I predict that this would be the way that Apple would go with their own Mac focused chips? Simple. Apple Silicon is based on the exact same cores as in the iPhone's A chips, but while the A17 has four efficiency cores, a pair of performance cores, the M3 has four of each, offering more performance at the cost of slightly higher power consumption, and also doubles the GPU cores from 5 to 10. And as Apple does the hard work of designing those cores every year for the iPhone that brings in over half of their revenue, it's a much smaller job to transfer those designs over to the M series too, even though their predecessors like the A12X only got updated every 18 to 24 months. So there's that, and the average time between MacBook Pro releases in the Intel era was around about 350 days, or just under a year. So why would Apple want to slow down their releases once they took control of their own chip designs? It just never made sense to me. So what are we getting and when? First up, and very much in line with last year, a low-end MacBook Pro and an updated 24-inch iMac, both with M4 coming around the end of this year, lining up perfectly with the 2023 releases that came at the same time. Bang on 12 months. Happy days. Let's keep this nicely like clockwork. Next, the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros with the M4 Pro and Max chips. Again, coming at the end of 2024, just like last year, although Mark has added a little bit of wiggle room, saying between the end of 2024 and early 2025. Now we saw October last year, but we have had January releases in the past, with M2 MacBook Pros arriving in January, potentially following some delays from a targeted late year release. The Mac Mini with M4 and M4 Pro is also slated to have the same release window as these, which right now suggests that Apple's cheapest Mac will skip the M3 chip generation. Then in spring, the 13 and 15 inch MacBook Airs will get its M4 upgrade again, mirroring the 2024 with their March announcement. We're also expecting the M powered iPad Pro M3 and iPad Air M2 in a pair of sizes each to come this year in May. And that could quite easily become the more powerful iPad slot in the year, with M4 and M3 versions respectively arriving in May 2025. Now we have heard that the reason for these coming in May is because of delays with the displays, but actually it might make sense and I'll come to that in a minute. Then in the mid-year of 2025 it's time for the high-end M4 chip with the M4 Max and potentially Ultra launching in the Mac Studio and then the Mac Pro with M4 Ultra and possibly something even more powerful, an M4 Extreme, in the second half of 2024 which sounds vague and half a year but the second half starts in July so it could be just after WWDC, which would make sense. As could bigger chips or systems and packages for the massively spacious Mac Pro, which could be supported by as much as half a terabyte of unified memory. And then we'll be back to October and ready for the M5 to release, and every YouTuber to ask the question, should I upgrade from M4? Spoilers, no, you shouldn't. In fact, Apple Silicon has taken such a leap from the dark, dark Intel days that if you have any Apple Silicon Mac and your workload hasn't drastically changed, you almost certainly don't need to upgrade it yet, even if you're on an M1 to an M3 or an M4. To put it in context, the M3 MacBook Air is 13 times faster than the fastest Intel MacBook Air that was sold up until 2020. 13 times. That is insane. Chips generally get 10 to 20% faster generation over generation these days, so that leap from Intel even to the first generation of Apple Silicon is enormous. An M1 MacBook Air, which you can now pick up for as little as $699, brand new, is still perfectly capable machine for anyone doing normal computer things with a computer, and even for more than what normal people do with their computers. This video, for example, is shot on a couple of iPhones, edited on a base level Mac Mini M1 with eight gigs of unified memory and 256 gigs of storage, the lowest spec Apple Silicon chip ever released. It's very capable, even now. But before we come to why you might actually want to upgrade to M4, why does Apple need to have this stable 
system of when things are going to arrive. Well, it's worked for them for years with the iPhone. The iPhone is so successful because everybody knows it's coming in September. We know when to plan for, and we know that September is Techtember. The iPhones come out, the new Apple Watch has come out, sometimes iPads, not last year, we had a bit of a year off. We always know that in September, we're going to get our new phones and that's lovely. So would it not make sense for Apple to establish more tent poles throughout the year so they can keep more of the attention on their products as opposed to their competitors? Every couple of months, having a small event that releases new products that gets the community talking again. But all of this being said, there is potentially a big reason why you may want to upgrade to M4 generation chips this year, and it is the buzzword of the past year or so, AI. Now, it seems that Apple is going to go big on AI this year, and the latest reports show that a lot of the AI features will run on device on the new iPhones, while in most cases, AI heavy lifting is done in cloud server farms for everyone else. Apple, however, has been putting neural engines for machine learning in their devices for years, and that's not just the iPhones, but just like with the other cores in there, these neural engines come to the max too. And these have been used behind the scenes for machine learning tasks like cataloging what's in every image in your photo library, reading and indexing the text in those images, working as part of the image processing pipeline for HDR, frame selection and more. But with Apple, this runs on your device instead of being processed off in a server farm, keeping your data safe and on your device and meaning it can run when you're away from Wi-Fi or out of cellular signal you don't need to be connected to the internet. And that means it also removes all of the cost of those high compute farms. They're often built using GPU style chips, meaning the service would likely not be charged for by Apple, especially for any on-device processing. A very different approach to what the competition is doing right now with ChatGPT and Midjourney and a lot of those other services that will charge you for tokens to use their service. One thing that we're not expecting to see, though, is redesigns to any of the Mac lineup at this point. Although the Mac Mini is very long in the tooth as far as the form factor goes. That has basically looked the same since 2010. But while the iPhone 15 Pro has recently moved to titanium from stainless steel, the Mac has historically been aluminium, at least for the past decade or so. And it still is to this day. However, if you'd like to know about some revolutionary material options that Apple could embrace to make their products even better, make sure that you subscribe as that video is coming soon. Thank you to all the Patreons for the support, and I'll see you in the next one. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell.